Welcome again to The Ref Show. We have Roger Dilks, we have Dean Maharab, we have a full panel. We have you there. I just suppose before we get started on what is a lot of action and incident to discuss, I just ask you to hold it, will you? Just hold it for about five minutes. We'll twiddle our fingers and thumbs. Can we manage that? Sure we can. You're not going to wait, are you? to see what we're going to say, unless you're just a bit shocked by that intro. But that, well, actually, four minutes and 46 seconds, to be precise, was the length of time taken for cumul cumulative delays while VAR was consulted in the Liverpool West Brom Cup tie over the weekend, which provides mm. a huge talking point, not least because all the refer referrals came out with the right call, and yet there was massive controversy and a lot of people not liking it. So what's an overview? I think we have to separate sometimes the fan from the professional here. As a fan, I've got to say I don't like it. As Ref Show presenter, we're going to have to move on with it. Well, it's coming in. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I think it's Great. here to stay. So we've got to look at the system and say, well, how can it be improved? Um, and I think the communication is an issue. If you look at any other sport, American football, um, rugby, cricket, where technology is used, the communication with the spectators in the ground is far better than what we've got at the moment in football. Um, in terms of this particular game, the average VAR on the trials, time it's taken for reviews has been about two and a half minutes. There were a lot of incidents to review in this game, so therefore you would expect it to be slightly higher. Um, but for me, I think they need to, sh to look at the protocol. I don't blame the match officials. The match officials are adhering to what the protocol lays out. They need to review it. Um, there were too many incidents reviewed, straightforward decisions that didn't need to be reviewed. There was an offside goal where six players were offside, didn't need to be reviewed. It was reviewed because protocol says it has to be. So I think they just need to tighten up the protocol right. and, and correct, for me, correct the injustices. Correct. Craig Pawson was the referee. Yep. I, I tweeted something over the weekend saying, look, as a fan, I don't like it apart from matters of, of fact. I've got huge numbers of likes, Alan Shearer and Carlton Palmer included, and you, Dean. Yeah, well, I mean, be careful what you wish for, because for me, um, I was always in favour of technology where it is factual. Mm. Uh, is it in, is it out? Fact. This is open to interpretation and opinion. And whenever you're going to get a system that allows that, then you're going to have significant delays in a game, particularly a game like there was on, on Friday. So we've got to look at it. It's got to be improved. It's early days. But for me, I would like to see it use less and use more sparingly. Sparingly for really, really obvious yeah. things. Everybody could see Thierry Henry with that World Cup qualifier exactly. Ireland yeah. years ago was handball. Absolutely. Quit. But there is a way of improving it for the, for the, the supporter and for everybody, for the media, Roger. Yeah, there is. And um, Arsenal uh, Football Club, um, in the Carabao Cup um, introduced the big screen so that spectators would have known what was going on. Um, nothing really happened in that game, sadly. It's a pity. Ironically. It's a pity because yeah. that would have uh, set a certain standard. Um, at Liverpool on, um, on, the, weekend, on the weekend, there wasn't a screen. And <laughs> therefore, a lot, of, a lot of the criticism uh, from the spectators, from the managers and so forth, is they didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Now, there is opportunity there, and that is one of the improvements that um, the Football Association and the Premier League are going to have to look at. Yeah. And I think once they do that, and once they start adhering to the protocol in its entirety, um, then I think with extra training for the uh, VAR and so forth, um, and the spectators and managers as well, because um, yeah. lots of people are having a pop over this weekend, and some of the stuff that's been talked about is out with the protocol. Yeah. So that will never happen, yeah. you know. But Keith but, Hackett um, advocating that screen. Good to see Arsenal adopting it. Yeah. Just a pity it wasn't used. Correct. And at Anfield, there's all, all sorts going off. There are loads of referrals. I think one newspaper said that the VAR was consulted no fewer than eight times mm. in that game, mm. which perhaps didn't need to happen. Players were still protesting, though, <laughs> after decisions by VAR. That has got to stop, surely. Well, I mean, it's just amazing because... Craig Parsons gone over to the monitor yes. re and as, on his way over to the monitor, and this was one of the reasons that the delay was so long mm. at the penalty. He was accompanied by a number of West Brom players. He, got, he eventually got rid of them. Uh, he reviewed the monitor, came back, gave a penalty, having reviewed it on TV screen and was then had four players around him. I mean, West Brom will be charged for that. There's no doubt about it. 
he, he could have cautioned more players. I think that might, if he'd have got his card out earlier, it might have stemmed it. But, but regardless, that cannot happen. And for no. me, two things you could do straight away to improve the system. One is the signal the referee does when he's holding his ear. That's not visible to the, to the ground. If there's a review, straight away, let's have the TV monitor signal so everybody knows it's being reviewed. Being reviewed doesn't mean the decision's going to be changed. It just mm, means there's a review. review. Yeah. The second thing is the integrity of the competition. So we've seen at the weekend a number of incidents in the FA Cup, which if VAR would have been in place, would have led to a different decision. That mm. cannot be right that we have certain games having VAR in the same cup competition yeah as ones that do not. And of course, the, the West Brom players surrounding the referee and protesting over VA at our position wouldn't have been the case if they hadn't seen the referee go to the side of the pitch to view it. Mm. So he's in public display viewing it and taking some, some while over it and they're still protesting. So we've got to get rid of that. Um, drama. You can't recreate the big moments in sport. The big no. moments in yeah. sport are goals, aren't they? Yeah. The spontaneity of the game. And this is where I've got my football supporters hat on and I fear that we're going to you know not have some of those great moments for instance now okay relatively low key perhaps but Notts County won Swansea won a lower division club here forces a deserved equaliser against a Premier League outfit John Stead's equaliser and then there's a big celebration there was no VAR fortunately no. We look at uh, <clears throat> replays and we see that the ball might have been over the byline before it was crossed for the cop might have been VAR would have been involved in that. There'd been mm -hmm. a long deliberation. Mm -hmm. And you still couldn't have told, for no, sure. No, no. I mean, for me, that would have killed that moment. Yeah, wow. it would. But I think, I think the other thing is that um, the sports that Dean's already mentioned, they've now turned that into an additional celebration. <clears throat> if, you look, if, you look at, if, if you look at cricket, for instance, yes, there is euphoria when um, somebody, you know... Um, uh, gets a, a player out yeah. um, via the umpire for LBW and then it's referred and so forth and everybody sees it and then you know it's a different kind of... Uh, well, I, I don't know if you can recreate it. I mean you have a player glancing nervously at the referee and, the, and a, an assistant referee and if all's well he's hearing back he knows it's a fact. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't got it. Now he and the crowd are going to be thinking oh the officials are, seem to be okay but yeah. they might be I'm looking up here at v VAR, yeah, and yeah. then I'm looking maybe right heavenward. Is you know, you, is the guy you, you up there well, happy with it? I mean, well, you, you, well, you can't have it. You can't have it both ways, though. No. You can't have it both ways. You can't have the technology. No, you can't. You can't have the technology no. and a referral system and keep that fantastic no. bit of football. And Being and for me, if you go back to the European Champions League final '99, mm. when Man U were one nil down, yes, came out, a lot of the reason they won that game was the momentum. Yes. It was psychology. They scored the equaliser. Bayern Munich's head went down. That two-minute review process <laughs> might have given Bayern Munich chance to pick the heads up. So it is going to have an impact on the game, mm. but it's here to stay. There's no way it's going anywhere. They've spent a lot of money on this. It's going to stay. What we, we've got to do now is look at ways it can be improved, mm. and I think the communication is absolutely key. Yeah. yeah, okay, and I speak as a Chesterfield fan, I'd have had it for one match, and one match only, I think, <laughs> 1997 <laughs> at Old Trafford yeah. against Middlesbrough. But there's yeah. loads of arguments about this. If we go on to Sunday's big ties, Kevin Friend, Chelsea 3, Newcastle 0, passed without Did incident. Well. Cardiff 0, Manchester City 2, this was Lee Mason's game. Um, quite a bit, well, not even contentious, just wrong uh, in this, wasn't there? Uh, there should have been a goal allowed. Bernardo Silva, it's flagged for offside. It was Simon Beck's had a, had a poor game. I mean, he's, terrible he's, game. he's flagged offside near the halfway line when the player is, is clearly on. And this indication here is baffling because even if the player would have been in an offside position, he was 12 yards from goal. Yeah. Yeah. So he couldn't have had an impact no. on the goalkeeper. And I would expect an assistant at that you, level. You wouldn't, need to v, that right. you wouldn't even need VAR for that. Would no, you? I mean, so, he's a FIFA official. He's well experienced. Mm. And the first decision... Um, in terms of uh, Sane in, in interfering with the goalkeeper. Mm. Well, you can only do that when you're offside. Yeah. The basic decision here is he's not offside. Mm. And the reason why he's giving him offside is he's not in line with the secondary and most yeah. defender. It's as simple as that. Right. So for him to be given offside with his experience is very, very poor. And that contributed 
to a very poor first 45 minutes by the officials. Mm -hmm. Including uh, a yellow card that, uh, that should have been read, which raises uh, a, a clarification point, which we'll do in part two, because plenty of people are saying, and I'm getting plenty of comments on Twitter out there saying, ah, the VAR, if there's a VAR, if it's a yellow card shown and it should have been read, the VAR can come in a room, but they, they can't. No, and that's one of the things I've referred to earlier, where people are throwing all sorts of things into the protocol, and the yes. protocol is very, very clear. If the referee issues a yellow card, then that cannot be referred. Right. Well, it depends well, what then, version of the protocol you read. It, it, it is, <laughs> well, that, but well, yeah. currently, yeah. Yeah. currently, that's what we're working to. Yeah. We'll expand on that, and unfortunately, another spitting incident. Second of the season, mm. second red card. We thought there wasn't much of that, or any of that, in football. See you for part two.